Hello, this is Spellbinder with this news update on the Great Depression of 2011, which makes the 1930 Depression look like everybody was employed. That bad. When you actually see the real figures of what's going on between the three unemployment levels, you know, the social, the media, and the private sector, and you add them all together, it comes out 25 to 30 percent unemployment rate in the United States. That's people that's been looking, have looked, and basically the 9.8 are the current unemployed. Not counting the ones who no longer are looking for work and the ones who no longer care. Because they lost everything anyways and they're living in a box in the street. In America. Very really makes me mad to know that they've gotten away with hoodwinking and destroying America like they've done. And they did it by design. That's what's bad. America destroyed by design. It really makes you mad when you think about how they use the U1, U2, and U3 unemployment boxes to cover up the true damage they have done to this country and to the people therein. I don't think we'll ever recover from this. It's going to be a hard road to recover on. Unless we can just instantly fire all these people, which is unconscionable, I don't think uh, we're going to be able to do anything. This is what the real unemployment rate is, though. Let me get this box up here. Let me get this story. There it is. Hiding a Depression, How the U.S. Government Does It, by Daniel Ehrman, CFA, Overview. The real U.S. unemployment rate is not 9.8%, but between 25 and 30%. That is a depression level of job losses. So why doesn't it look like a depression for many people? How can so large a statistical discrepancy exist, and how is it that the holiday shopping malls are so crowded in a depression? The true devastation is hidden by essentially placing the job losses inside three different boxes. The official unemployment box, the true full unemployment box, and the most importantly the staggering and persistent private sector job loss box that has been temporarily covered over by a fantastic level of governmental deficit spending. The recovering out of the recession cover story is only plausible when nobody connects the dots and adds all the boxes together. We will add together the three boxes herein using U.S. government statistics for all three and convincingly show that the U.S. economy is in far worse condition than what is presented by the government or by the mainstream media. No, we have not emerged from recession and there will be no double dip because the first dip was straight down to a depression level economy in 2008-2009 and we haven't come back up creating artificial free money on a massive scale that artificially boosts short-term employment is how your segment depression level unemployment into the separate boxes and hide what is really happening. It is this radical strategy that most distinguishes the current downturn from the 1970s and 1930s. The ultimate source of most of the current free money that hides the depression is the government risking the impoverishment impoverishment of the U.S. savers and investors for potentially decades to come, with the worst of the damage concentrated on retirees and boomers. That's right, they're going to really destroy all the people that spent their entire life up to now making a dream for themselves. <laughs> they just turned it into a nightmare and took it away from us. To have a chance of defending your hope for the future lifestyle, there is simply no substitute for seeing the truth clearly. For it is only when we see through the lies with clarity that we can distinguish the false opportunity of manipulated markets from the real opportunities that can be found in unexpected places. The headline, Unemployment, Box 1. This is what that looks like. This is what we're under right here. Shows you the employment. 90.2 headline unemployment 9.8 see this is where they're getting that 9.8 the graph above is our starting point the first box it is the headline rate of employment in the US that is featured in newspaper articles and discussed on the cable business news as of November 2010 the official US unemployment rate was 9.8 wow that deeply painful unemployment rate 
rates since 2008 have been the highest seen since the end of the Great Depression, with the exception of a 10.8 peak in 1982, 9.8 is not a depression level unemployment rate. Real unemployment, box number two, as economies uh, economists and political decision makers know quite well the official unemployment rate is not the full rate of the US unemployment. The official rate is technically known as the U3 rate of un unemployment and is potentially advantageous partial accounting for unemployed. The US Bureau of Labor Statistics calculates unemployment six different ways U1 through U6 and is only in the U6 static statistics that is all categories of unemployment are added together and it comes up to that 25-30% of the people in the United States unemployed. The two biggest differences between the U3 official rate of unemployment and the U6 full rate of unemployment are in the treatment of the long-term unemployment and voluntary part-time workers. That's right, there's no full-time worker, but there's lots of part-time workers out there doing two or three jobs just to do what they did with one job. If you were, if you've been out of work for a long time, you badly won a job, but you know from your long search that nobody in your area is hiring, you already have applications on file at every reasonable prospect, and you haven't filled out a new application recently, then from an official perspective, you three, you are not only no longer unemployed, you just become a non-person altogether. You don't even exist anymore in the eyes of the government. Or to the world, because they just stop reporting on you. Alternate, alternatively, if you have a master's degree in engineering, lost your job, and are working 15 hours a week, the most you can get in a convenience store at minimum wage to keep a little money coming in, then from an official U3 perspective, you would be fully employed. Now, see how the lies are done and disinformation that makes you believe this stuff? In contrast, U6 is the most inclusive measure of unemployment as it includes both the long-term unemployed and the involuntary part-time category. Thus, the individuals in each of these situations described above would be included in U6 measure. Box number two. The box number two employment. As you can see here, the green bar segment in the graph above illustrates what happens when we look at the full U6 measure of unemployment as reported by the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics for November of 2010. Our unemployment rate almost doubles as we go from a 9.8 to a 17 percent of the civilian workforce being unemployed. The real unemployed go from 1 in 10 workers to 1 in 6 workers. The difference between a just under 10 percent unemployment rate and a close to 20 percent rate of unemployment is the difference between recession and a depression. Unfortunately, there is more in the mix than simple unemployment statistics. And when you look inside the third box in the next section, we will see that the economic situation is not a mild depression, but a rather a full-blown major depression. To try to prevent a flood of corrective emails from readers, let me state that the challenge I set for myself in writing this article was to illustrate what was happening using only official U.S. government numbers, meaning, in my opinion, using unreliable and deliberately misleading numbers that have been subjected to increased degree of political manipulation over the decades. I have been writing articles for years and have discussed increasing government manipulation of the inflation statistics and am well aware of the work of John Williams and others and trying to independently determine genuine, genuine inflation and unemployment rates. I personally believe that in the real inflation and unemployment rates are substantially higher than what is being reported to us and that the real U6 measures is likely 20% or above. That said, I want to separate the concept of the three boxes from the concepts of statistical manipulation so there are no distractions for a reader who was skeptical about the manipulations. Therefore, whether the U.S. government would abuse the fine print of economic statistics to mislead its citizens for political purposes, if you have no trouble accepting that the government manipulates statistics for political advantage, then understand that the situation is significantly worse than what is illustrated herein. 
the gaping hole in the economy to see what is the real depression looks like taking take a long look at the graph below which shows what has happened to the US economy between 2007 and 2009 as shown with the blue bars in the chart below the graph the size of the US private sector economy plunged by 1.3 trillion and it hasn't come back none of this has come back it's still gone yet we don't see the full extent of this plunge around us on the streets or in the headlines indeed despite this ongoing gaping hole in the US economy the official story is that the US isn't even in a recession what happened to all the job losses from this rapid and persistent collapse of a large section of the US private economy the answers can be found in the red and yellow bars above that's where they're hiding it all <clears throat> it says uh, representing the the yellow the red and yellow bars above representing federal government spending and state and local government spending federal spending rose by 700 billion and state and local government spending rose by 300 billion with these state and local spending being funded by federal government transfers that have been netted out so it is really almost all growth in the federal spending the private economy plummeted by 1.3 trillion while the government economy soared by 1 trillion and we we're left with what looks like a much more manageable 300 billion shrinkage, the kind of economic change that might be associated with a 9.8 official story or unemployment rate. In other words, a little over 75% of the collapse in the private economy was and is being covered by increased government spending. In this graph, as shown in the graph above, there has been a radical shift in the composition of the U.S. economy with the government share of the economy leaping from 35 to 43 percent. This is perhaps the most rapid and greatest change in the fundamental nature of the U.S. economy since World War II. Yet there has been remarkably little discussion of the full consequences. The U.S. government has fantastically increased its spending relative to the overall economy, but the government sources of revenue haven't increased. The target of this spending has been the third box, the covering over of real, persistent, and massive private sector job losses through creating what are effectively artificial short-term jobs, originally paid for by ramping up the deficit at a fantastic rate, with the covering over now being funded by creation of new money from thin air. Yes, the feds are working to cover everything up by just taking the treasury's printing presses and going hog wild with them. The third box, artificial employment. What happens if we add the real full U6 unemployment rate of 17% to the hole in the private sector that is currently being covered by the government spending money it doesn't have? The simplest approach is to say that 9% of the U.S. economy is manufactured money and that funding government deficits if we didn't create our official money to fund our official jobs then that 9% economy implodes if the 9% of the economy abruptly disappears there goes 9% of the jobs as well so the unemployment rate would immediately jump by another 9% there is a staggering number of simplifications involved in this approach, but it's not a bad approximation for the illustration, discussion, and purpose within a short article. This is box three. The ad add 17% and 9% from the two different US government sources and we have 26% real unemployment right there that is if the Federal Reserve are not manufacturing money out of nothingness to fund government spending without limits that grave peril to all savers and investors then it would be fair to say the US government would be at a 26% unemployment rate in 1933 during the worst part of the US Great Depression unfortunately it is likely worse than even that there is a multiplier effect when it comes to employment and if we drop 9% of the economy and support jobs that have created and served the people who make up that 9% go away as well we also need to allow for more government manipulation of inflation statistics which creates a little greater economic loss picture and in total arguably if we look at the real private sector right now and we set aside jobs funded by modern monetization we are at a real unemployment rate of over 30% and if we were to end the deficits and assaults on the value of the US dollar and the US government only spends what it could take in we would be at 
30% plus level almost instantaneously. And there you go. That's what they've been doing. Hope you enjoyed this. Read this article. And have a good day. This is Spellbinder on the 3rd of January 2011.